this is the way that I want you to approach multiplicity. Some of you have already done this, um, but there's a couple of little tricks and tips that I have, so be sure to uh, follow along. First, we're going to create new, and this actually might change after I do my auto align, but I'm going to go to print, letter, landscape over here, background contents, transparent, it's going to be a width of 11 inches, height of 8.5. This is just standard paper, uh, so if we want to print them out, hit OK. And first thing I want to do is bring in my first layer by going to File, Place Embedded. I have my multiplicity folder and inside of RAW. I actually have these CR2s, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take in a CR2 so you can actually it's going to bring up this. Now I don't want to edit anything because any changes that I have, the little changes between all of the different uh, pictures is going to come up. So I'm going to take this, hit OK. Now I have this layer over here. I don't want to move it either. I'm just going to leave it there for right now. But what I do want to do is right click on the layer and rasterize the layer. So now I can edit it easy before it comes in placed as a what's called a smart object. I'm going to take my next layer over here. I think this one is the one that's going to be over here. And don't touch it. Hit return to cement it and right click. And notice how if I right click on the actual like thumbnail it doesn't give me it. I have to actually right click over here. Rasterize layer. So now I have these two layers, but look at the, it, there's a slight shift in that layer, okay? So what we actually want to do is we want to select both of these layers. You can hold Command and click them, or you can do Command A, well, oh, actually, sorry, uh, hold Shift if there's more than one layer. So I have both of these layers right here selected. I'm going to edit, and auto align layers. If it doesn't show up here, it's because you didn't uh, rasterize the layers. So auto align layers. And then it's going to ask me a couple of things. I want to automatically have it align the layers and it's going to do all this repositioning and uh, thinking about the, the bulbing, the distortion that we know about for optical aberration. Uh, vignette removal and geometric distortion, you can do that and then hit OK. And so now what that does is it goes through, aligns the layers a little better, and what we get is that shift is now gone. So part of this now too is that this the bottom layer right here is me in the middle, the top layer right here is me going like this. What I like to do in these situations is you can see you can bring down your opacity just a bit so you can actually see the layer under that helps us see the positioning of what's going on and if there's any overlap especially if you have the overlapping pictures so things that we already know we can go over here uh, one two three four down is our quick selection tool so I'm going to start painting on myself now notice that I have this kind of whole thing selected right now command D is deselect. So I command D, make sure that I have this, uh, my top layer selected, and now I'm just going to go through and paint around my body. So one thing to also note about this, I'm kind of going around, oops, made a mistake, command Z is step back. With the quick selection tool, I'm painting around and adding things, but what I can also do is if I hold option, I can take away from a selection. So I'm holding option, you can see that it becomes a minus sign there. So go around that selection. If I need to plus sign, I just let go and it comes back. I can also command plus sign zoom in to add to some of this selection as well. I can also come up here and change the size of the brush. So I want a little bit more detail in that brush. So this is looking pretty good. I want to get that out of there. Some around the hand. 
the, the closer that you are, of course, the background is going to be the same if you did it right. So I don't have to be super, super, super on point, but I do want to get as much as possible. So that looks pretty good. So I have this selected here. What I want to actually do is I want to have the inverse of this deleted. So what I can do, get my hand here, sorry. So in order to get the inverse of a selection, the opposite of what you actually have selected, you can go to select inverse. It's also shift command I. And that takes all, it, I just had myself selected, now I have everything but myself selected. And then when I hit delete, I'm here. Command D is deselect, and I'm transparent here, so I want to bring this transparency back up. Okay? Now, a couple of other things that can, that can help you out here. I'm going to step back and bring that layer back, but you have a whole bunch of different selection modifications as well here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go to mo uh, select, modify, feather, and this is not going to be such a harsh drop off from, from this uh, selection to the next. In fact, if I go about 10 pixels, and I'm just kind of playing around with this, uh, and I so command shift I is selection. I now, when I when I delete, you can see, I just deleted myself, but you, can you see that feathering around? That's actually going to add to, oops, we'll go back, command shift I, that's going to add to around me to give a little bit of cushioning for that, for uh, the selection. So that was select, <coughs> modify, and feather. Other ones you can do expand or contract. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to expand a little bit. So I'm going to go expand my selection by 10 pixels and actually I'm going to go back, select, modify, contract mine by 10 pixels and I kind of get this buffer zone around me here. After I do that, then I can go in and feather by five. And these, you, these numbers are just, I'm kind of making them up as we go, but what that does now is gives me a little bit of a feathered outline of what I'm dealing with here. So it's not as, it's not as abrupt. You can see that my shoes look like it kind of fades into your selection. If I were to hide this, you can see that there's a fade around it. So experiment a little bit with that, um, that contracting and the expansion and feathering once you have your selection, and it's going to look way better blended. So I want you to do this for all three layers, then file, save as. Now, some people are running into you, didn't, you want to save it as a Photoshop file in your project files, right? So multiplicity, your name, and you save it as a Photoshop document, PSD, in your project files. But then when you go to Save As, if you don't see JPEG here, you're going to see something that says Save As Copy. And you're going to save a copy, or you're going to pick JPEG here, and you're going to put this into your uh, Edits folder. Save that and then put that into the NAS.